Good evening, friend. Um, uh, want to put a little word out for God, God's word here, and uh, something that just came to me the other day. Not much going on in my life right now. Not much, really. Retired, alone. I'm getting a miniature dachshund. My, hopefully, my cousin down in Virginia uh, has a miniature dachshund, Karen, who uh, likes this channel, and um, she has some ghost stories she wants to share on here. And I've heard a couple of them, and they're uh, actually they're frightening. But she's a devout Christian. My cousin, like myself, um, she has these things, you know, things like, well, I cover on this channel, actually come to her as well. Might be a generational thing, you know, or what they call running in the family. She's in my mom's side. But uh, her uh, miniature dachshund is expecting, and uh, mid-June, and I'm told if I drive down there to Virginia, I can have a pick of the litter. So, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a year now since my beloved dog died suddenly. And I think he would uh, want me to be happy, above all. I hope we meet our pets in heaven, huh? Wouldn't that be great? Forever young, healthy. Ugh, no cars to hit them, no diseases. Oh, that would be so grand. I forgot my tea. Hold on a second. Shazam! I'm back with my tea. I forgot. I don't need to apologize for being unorganized. I could just edit it out very easily. So. Alright, so yes, I hope to get a miniature dachshund this summer. If I do, you'll definitely see him or her. Little tiny wiener dog, as they call them. Um, it occurred to me that God seems to have a thing for, I've said this before, um, God has a thing for everyday, ordinary, imperfect people. Nothing special kind of people. He seems to, I, I, you ever get that feeling? I mean, you could see it in the Bible. I mean, it's evident in the Bible that I mean, he likes everybody, loves everybody, likes, loves, but he really seems to love and appreciate, like, his favorite pets, just everyday, ordinary people, imperfect people. And I'm not talking about just humble people. I'm talking about people that are nothing special, and they have problems. Um... Their problem might even be pride. There's really not much that can disqualify you. Blasphemy the Holy Spirit, I think. So, I just wanted to cover that real quick. And, um, I got some things I want to read on this giant tablet I have that I thank God for. It's been really handy. I'll show you what I'm reading on. Look at this thing. Yeah, it's a Note 23, or I'm sorry, uh, a Galaxy Note S9. Things giant, really great, but it's good for this. So, a few words on the Bible and how God can use and likes to use. Like Jesus said, that the cornerstone that the builders cast aside, Jesus used it. The cornerstone is supposed to be the best cut rock, the strongest, the most perfectly cut, the cornerstone of your building. And uh, Jesus, I got to look that verse, verse up, sorry. Hey, Google, what did Jesus say about the cornerstone the builders rejected? Excuse me. He doesn't speak to me anymore. I'm able to get it going. Oh, 
Um, here you go. I'm getting there. Matthew 21, 42. I wish I'd just list the verse. I don't want to read the whole page. Hey, Google, show me Matthew 21, verse 42. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The stone that the builders rejected. It just isn't good enough to be used in my house. Throw it in a, you know, wherever the pile of reject rocks. That's the one God chose to use. The cornerstone the builders rejected. So, going on to the Bible. Um, this is in Acts chapter 4, verse 13 through 14. Now, when the men of the Sanhedrin, that would be the Jewish high court in Christ's time, when they saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John and grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained, just ordinary men. And I guess ordinary men in Christ's time and place were uneducated. When they, when the, I shouldn't have interjected. Let me read it straight through. Now when the men of the Sanhedrin saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John and grasped the fact that that they, they were uneducated and untrained men. They were astounded and began to recognize that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing there with them, they had nothing to say in reply. And that's in Acts 4, verse 13 and 14. And, uh, Peter and John were ordinary, untrained, uneducated, and uh, they could see that the Sanhedrin could see that they were transformed by Christ, and he used them. Now, I'm not going to read these scriptures, but here's some cases of uh, ordinary, imperfect people that God chose to use. Noah drank too much beer. I, I think the story with Noah was he, he passed out during the daytime in his tent naked, and his two sons walked in on him and saw him that way, which was pretty shameful then and now. It would be shameful for anybody. Noah drank too much, but God used him to build the ark to save the world. And you can see that in Genesis um, 6 through 9, chapter 6 through chapter 9. You can read about Noah and uh, a couple cases where he liked to drink his beer quite a lot, apparently. Then you've got Abraham and Sarah. I, see, I, could, I can almost relate to Noah. I don't, I don't think I've ever drank that much, but yeah, I like my beer. Um, and I'm not bragging about it either. It's, you know, it's nothing to brag about. But Noah drank so much he passed out buck naked. Well, he was in his tent. And his, his sons walked in and saw him there. Now, Abraham and Sarah, I can... Um, kind of relate to them, and that they were old, washed up, I mean elderly, really. They were old and washed up couple, but God used them to build an, a nation. Gave them a child, a, a miracle. And they, they were really kind of, you could read about them in Genesis chapter 11 through 25, and I kind of got a kick out of their uh, reaction when they, I think they responded to the angel you know, about, uh, we're too old to have kids. They were old and washed up, and God chose them to build a nation. Then there's Joseph. You also read in Genesis also. A lot of ordinary people in Genesis. A lot of ordinary people all through the Bible. Um, Joseph was an entitled teen. Some, some rich people, entitled. He went through God's classroom. He was an entitled teen who went through God's classroom and training to save both Egypt and Israel. You know, so there's another, there's, he was entitled, rich kid. And God used him to save Egypt and Israel. Then there's Moses. 
Moses was a stutterer. I didn't know that. He stuttered. Did a little research before I did this. I like to use God's but the Bible first. And uh, but God used he became God's spokesman and leader, though he was not a, apparently he had a speech impediment, stuttering. And you can read about that in Exodus chapter three and four. Uh, in Joshua chapter two, there's Reb, who was a prostitute that God used to help his spies and overtake Jericho. And then there's Jonah, the one that got swallowed by the whale. He was an escapist, and actually a very bitter kind of ate up person, too, I got on reading that book. But God used him. Uh, he brought him back to save Nineveh, and Jonah hated the people of Nineveh. And God told him, they're my people. God, as I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jonah wanted God to destroy the people of Nineveh. He hated them. And God said, uh, they're my people to do whatever I want with you don't know what my plans are with them. Sure, there are some wicked, wicked people among them, but I have plans for them, maybe. God used Jonah to save Nineveh. Then there's Esther in uh, the book of Esther, chapter 1 through 8. She was the adopted orphan who became the queen to save Israel. That would be Esther, an adopted orphan. And then, again, in the book of uh, Matthew 26, and John 21, and then again in Acts 1 through 2, there's Peter, who was a quitter that God brought back to start the kingdom. And then we've got Paul, the Apostle Paul. He was the enemy of Christians, persecutor of Christians, as you know. And he became, God used him to become the most prolific Christian in the New Testament. What an example Paul is the very persecutor of Christians, became the most prolific Christian in the New Testament. And you could read about his conversion in Acts 7, chapter 7 through 9. Wonderful story. And so, really, God can use anybody. Turn this thing off. Because honestly, I got, I mean, I'm not going to talk about myself, I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm anybody. Sometimes I feel pretty special. I'm, right now I don't. That's for darn sure. There's a nothing going on in my life. Nobody, nothing. I seem to have people. God put a mark on me or something that I haven't done anything wrong and nobody hates me or anything. Just nobody, nobody just, just seems like I'm supposed to be alone. And I feel like it's, it's God's will for my life, as much as I don't like it at times. I really can feel like nobody. Don't, definitely nobody special. Getting old will make you humble. You know, when I was younger, I was, I was pretty uh, charged up, very outgoing, kind of energetic, on top of it kind of guy. Uh, athletic as well, I might add. Getting older will definitely, uh, it will humble you in so many ways, getting older. Not only will you lose your, your own physical self that you, you know, if you had it going on when you were younger and stuff, it, that's gone. And, and the people you loved and the life you had before, uh, they're gone. It's gone. It ain't coming back either. Not in this world. It might. I mean, look at uh, God used Abraham and Esther. Uh, you never know what God's plans are for you. But, uh, you know, you start losing people you love. And I was gonna do, I'm going to do a talk about a stone heart. A stone heart. I mean, that's another talk. I don't think I'm going to put any more. I'm going to put one more of my... Chapter 5 of my Moonlight on Open Graves on here. There's no nudity on this one, but it's kind of a very gothic horror. Uh, it really kind of explores the antagonist in the, in the book. 
Moonlight on, on Open Graves. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take it off this channel because there, it is. I wrote this before I even started the YouTube channel. I wrote this book and finished it, uh, you know, a few years back. Um, but most of it I wrote before I even started this. I think the first 20 chapters was uh, before I even had a YouTube channel. And I was trying to write a book. Um, I had no idea what I was going to write about, honestly. I got the whole idea. Somebody's dog died. And then my brother said, the poor dog. He said, I guess it's time for you to go on to your next life. I looked over at him and I just kind of, <laughs> it just kind of stuck with me, you know. <clears throat> uh, so I decided to start a book on that and see where it goes. But it, actually, Moonlight and Open Graves is about epic battle between good and evil. And Christianity and salvation is in this book. It does redeem itself. Um, but I do get pretty graphic. And there's profanity. There's sex scenes. A few. Some of it you might think is just stupid. <laughs> and then there's scenes of uh, ghosts and nightmares that were my own nightmares for years in my 20s. Which is kind of cool to revisit those. Thank God I haven't had those nightmares in, nightmares in decades. But I used to have these same ones, and they were pretty, pretty something else. They're in there. But it's about good and evil, the battle between good and evil, on the spiritual level and the psychological level. Because both the protagonist and the antagonist have PTSD issues, namely from their war experiences and some other things. So there's a lot going on there. And uh, some of the chapters are light. The first few chapters, like chapter 5 that I just finished, that is, there's nothing light about that at all. There, there's no nudity in it. Just some dark. A man, some of the things he did in his past that haunt him, and his nightmares and possibly demons that he has to face. So... I'm going to put chapter 5 out there, and I'm thinking it has no, this book has no place on this channel. What I'm going to do is start my own YouTube channel just for this book. And for those of you interested, I will let you know how to find that. Let me know your thoughts on that. Unless you think it's all right for me to put that stuff on this channel, um, because there's still some more chapters with sex scenes and some, some violence uh, not all of it's bad. Most of it isn't. And there is, it is redeeming. And Jesus Christ uh, comes out in this. The power of Christ. But evil in all its forms do too. So. God uses ordinary people. He, he seems to like. It occurred to me the other day. He seems to like ordinary people. I think pride. Uh. I think you can use a proud person, too. Just, if you're feeling down and out and nothing special, maybe to the world you are nothing special. Maybe you're in a nursing home or just kind of dumpy and out of it. <laughs> Whatever. Or maybe you got it all going on. You just don't feel like anybody's special. Uh, there's so many different reasons. Like nobody wants you anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going down the wrong path. But look around you in your life and tell me, and also in the Bible. And you've got to admit, doesn't it seem like God has a, 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 a special place in his heart of hearts for ordinary, everyday ordinary people, imperfect people? And again, I'm not just talking about people that are very humble and they know it, you know. I'm talking about people that don't care. Everyday ordinary people, miserable maybe, imperfect, and that's just the way it is. You know. Uh, all right, I, that's all I wanted to say. Um, I wanted to put something out there for God after posting these five chapters of this book, which are just kind of 
a lot of sin and darkness in them. But honestly, it gets light. Lightness. It's, it's The book really is an epic. I wrote this over a period of a, a decade or better. It's really about the battle between good and evil on the spiritual level and a psychological level. But there are some pretty dark things in it, and some of it's pretty stupid, so... Let me know what you think, and let me know what you think. Your, if you have any thoughts about God liking everyday, ordinary people, you know what I mean. There's a song, "Everyday People." I forgot what song it is, but this isn't a revelation. Everyday kind of people seem to be God's favorites. I don't know if He has favorites. I think maybe people that are lofty or maybe very far down, but people that are very lofty, maybe they're just not as accessible to God because they're so busy with their life and their image comes so much before God. I bet that's what it is. And everyday ordinary people who know they're not, I'm nothing special. And you're not, really. You are only special because Christ made us special through the cross. So, everyday ordinary people, maybe they seem like God uses them more because they're more open, susceptible for God, because they're not preoccupied with themselves so much. We're all preoccupied with ourselves. I don't know. I don't know. I know that when I've got it all going on, when I had it all going on in my life, career, relationship, health, things going on. And God seemed to take a dis distant place in the back because everything going on, you know, I'm in shape, I'm the man, I'm in charge of some people. Maybe I'm at the top of my career, my relationship's going on, you know, and all that really comes first. But everyday ordinary people, downcast people, those are the ones God seems to be able to reach. Maybe it's not that they're his favorites. They're just more accessible. Like, like you know, so I'll leave it there. I'll let you think about that. Let me know what you think. And uh, if my book offends anybody or even shocks me, I was trying to be scary in it. You know, I wasn't trying to write this for a children's book. Um, also, when I keep changing, I want to do a talk on AI because I use AI art because it's just so convenient and some of it's good uh, in a bad way and a good way. But there's something a little off about it, too. And I don't know that I like it, honestly. I want to talk about that. Get your input. Hear your input. So why does it seem like God loves ordinary people? Or does, does it seem that way? Ordinary, everyday people and the downcast and the lowly. You know anybody lowly? I do. I do. <clears throat> and not just myself. I know some other people, too. They've just been down so long. We wait upon the Lord. All right. Tim Blab, over. Let me know what you think. Thank you. Oh, um, I forgot to say. I always remember something. I want you to notice that these are just my ordinary, everyday candles. Let me relight those. Because that was going to be part of my little talk here. These candles aren't my fancy ones. I made a video about my fancy special spiral prototype. Uh, I made a mistake with the molding of that, and I've got to redo it. I had to tear the whole thing apart and remake it. Uh, so it's back to my everyday, ordinary. These came out of the bottom of the box of candles that were used and I chose them for this little talk with you. Thank you. Good night. Good day.
Good morning. Thank you very much, each of you.